Tea or tincture? Is it just a matter of preference or what are the pros, cons of each? Awesome question. Okay, this is why I have a huge shop filled with all different kinds of preparations because when people come to see me and or when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with clients, I have to think about like not only the right herbs for the people and what what they, you know, like let's let's match up this herb or this formulation for these people, but really what will they take to be compliant? I used to work in the dental industry and people would ask, what is better? The floss that you like wrap around your fingers, those little floss um, toothpick things, they have like the tiny little like violin string or a water pick. And the answer is whatever you're gonna use, that's the answer. It's a matter of practicality, in my opinion. And so that's what I ask people because I ask them this, would you prefer a tea? Would you prefer a tincture? There's actually people who like, and by tea, I mean, like we're talking about, am I, am I thinking you need a tea therapeutically? Like you need a therapeutic dose of this plant. And the only way that it's going to be a therapeutic dose is if you make a, a decoction you know, and you're going to heat that back up and you're going to drink it three times a day. Do you see yourself doing that? Um, some people know right away. No way. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to do that. I will definitely make a cup of tea a couple times a week when I have a chance to sit down and stuff like that. But um, good. All right. It's great to know these things. Um, I think that this is really the answer. It's not a, it is just a matter of preference. Um, I can think of, I could think of a, a, a great nervous system formula that's made in a tincture. You know, I make it in a tincture because I know that the plants, you know, it, we'll, we'll reduce it a little further here. I know that the plants that are in this formula are going to be extremely bitter. They're going to, they're going to make you shiver and shake and they're going to, uh, quake out all of the nervousness from your body. You're going to say, whoa, ugh, that was gross. But luckily for me, it was only 15 drops. So that's done. Or are you going <laughs> to, some people are like, no, I really, don't. I don't want to take a tincture. I'm really connected to tea. I'm fine with tea. I'm fine with bitter teas. Actually, I drink uh, motherwort and bugleweed and blue vervain all the time. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you're, if you're into that, then um, actually, I think that a tea would probably be better in that case, because that's what you're, see, I, I really think a lot of the medicine is not just the plant um, offering its, uh, all of its different ways from the subtle to the gross on how it can be of service to our body and to our needs of our conditions. But really the relationship that we have to the medicine, how are we taking it? Is it something that we just ordered offline or online? I mean, and, and just, you know, I read something somewhere from some random blog and this is the plant, or did I uh, go through whatever I needed to go through to like really research? And maybe I'm getting a recommendation specifically from an herbalist qualified herbalist who is like looking me up and down and doing all the assessments that the herbalists do and they come up with this formula or maybe you know like really getting down to it and being like oh okay i'm going to make that myself i'm going to grow the plant i'm going to harvest the plant i'm going to put the plant into a pot of tea or maybe skip those first two steps but i'm like the in other words it's not just a matter of preference the pros and cons to me really come down to these subtle experiences because I think I, and I, I would claim that the subtle informs the gross or in other words, um, what is material is, uh, was beget from uh, spirit. So along the, that way, along that process of being an idea and uh, uh, having the emotional connection to something, in, uh, improves our, our quality. This is how the, um, uh, what's it called when you take something that's fake um, and like a sugar pill. Um, 
oh my gosh, I'm blanking here. You're you're saying it. You're saying it. I know you're saying it. Um, and it's going to come to me. Um, <laughs> this is how that thing works. <laughs> oh man. Um, what's it called? It doesn't matter. It's going to come to me in a second. I was in a train of thought and I lost it. Anyway, great question. Uh, the answer is it doesn't, it's, it's, it is to me a matter of preference. There are pros and cons. I think it's really important to explain these pros and cons to know the plants, to have somebody that knows the plants. I can read all like, like I see people coming in all the time and they're looking on blogs and their, their blogs are telling them about this plant. They need this plant because it's blue vervain and they have this body type and they have this mental mindset and they come in and they, they're like, I want an ounce of blue vervain. And I'm there and I'll say, have you ever worked with this plant before? And you plan on making a tea with this or a tincture? No, a tea. Hmm. Have you ever tried it? Have you ever tasted it? You want to taste a little right now? Do you want to see if you really want to do it this way? Because I have the tincture or you, I can teach you how to make the, this one ounce into a tincture. I just don't want you to be disappointed when you uh, are making this, this medicine that you feel really connected to and it's disgusting. Um, so um, <laughs> good question. I'm still blanking on the name of that stupid. What is the word? <laughs> Placebo. 